See, I'm so grateful, man. You're looking at a young man that's blessed. I'm so grateful to be where I am tonight. I could be anywhere else, but my youngest daughter is here with me. Cherokee Wyman, that's my soldier. We drive usually to Alabama 10 hours. And ain't her first time doing it. You don't understand the tears that want to come down my face right now. But as a father, you're looking at a young man who never knew his dad or his grandfathers. And when I talk to you about having six kids with a beautiful granddaughter and my wife is fine. <laughs> you, you heard me? I'm trying to tell you something. What's possible? Everyone say possible. So here's the deal. The one thing I love about the game of football, it has a first half and a I grew up in Northern California in a small city. It was a mile and a half big. It was the number one murder capital. I grew up with a mom raising four boys by herself. The first time I met my father, I had to bury him. I never knew my dad, but I had a big dream. Everyone say big dream. Big dream. My dream was to go to the NFL. So I used to run to my mom. I'd be like, and she'd tell me you can make it, but you have to be respectful, you got to treat others like you like to be treated, and you have to be obedient. I want to share this second half. I get drafted by the Patriots. We get in the training camp, it's hot outside, we have all this equipment on, we're running into each other, boom, and I'm jumping up there, dog. Let's ball. So I've been blessed to win some very big rings. In order to win those rings, it took a lot of hard work. Everyone say hard work. Uh, Pays off. Pays off. But one thing I was very good at was write down my goals. Everyone said goals. goals. And I had written out of my locker and it said, if I'm trying, I'm flying. But if I don't, I won't. That means these three E's I share them everywhere I go help change my life. Everyone say effort, effort. Education, education, excellence. So I make it through training camp. I get to the stadium for the first time. We get ready for a Monday night football game. We in the locker room, we putting on our pants, we taping our ankles, shh, shh, put them shoulder pads on, taping our wrists, shh, shh, snap them helmets on, and we run down the tunnel to the field. We get to the 50 yard line, the lights is on, it's cold outside, stadium vibrating, you can see the pencil symbol painting in the grass, you can smell the new grass, you have the ears to ear camera, you got the head cam following you everywhere in the field. Now y'all watch football, right? How many of y'all know Brett Favre? We getting ready to play Brett Favre and them. He counts to the line. Blue 42, red 50. But see, I was playing deep and severe, right? So I was getting down in my stance, I was like, I was breathing that cold air. I had steam coming down in my helmet. I had Vaseline on these nice arms so I looked good on TV, right? So before Brett Favre came to the line, this real big guy, number 77, with a big old belly going up and down was like, <laughs> and he just dropped down in front of me. He was real ugly. <laughs> He was breathing real hard for <laughs> Talk about his lips were so big, looked like two pancakes fighting over syrup, you know what I mean? <laughs> Too slow, right? So he snaps the ball. Back far, drop back. And when he saw me coming around the corner, he took off. Ah! Ah! He started running and screaming. But then, 6'8, 300 pounds, I snatched him up. Now, I was at the 40 yard line on national television. I started doing what every last one of y'all started doing. I started dancing, I was like, lean with it, rock with it, lean with it. I started having fun. Everyone say, having fun, having fun. Working, hard, working hard, pays off. Pays off. See, it was something else I wanted to do great in my life. See, I wanted to get married, have some beautiful kids, and see my wife, see, she's not just my wife. That's my queen. See my queen, young ladies? She come home every night to a nice hot bubble bath. She got her candles lit on the side of her tub with a nice little chocolate, some M&Ms and Kit Kats. She get roses every chance I get. She get roses for no reason. 
She get roses cause she my queen, cause I love her. All my ladies say I am, I am. a queen. Yes, you are. How many of my boys really like football in here? Who can tell me what NFL stand for? I can't hear you. NFL stands for not for long. Average career in the NFL is two years. How many years? How many? I have a question. How long does your relationship with Jesus last? Say it like you mean. I'm not for you to say what you mean and mean what you a lot of times we say things we don't really mean. So why am I sharing this with you today? To all my young ladies, I have something to ask you, okay? Is that okay? First, let me just say this to all my young men, all my young ladies, if your father's never been there to tell you, then we want to stand here and tell you I love every last one of you in here tonight. By the time I walk off this platform, you'll know that. So here's my question to all my young queens in here today. If I gave you $55,000, would you give all your money to your boyfriend? <laughs> they like, no. Okay, ladies, let's say if I gave you $25,000, would you give all your money to your boyfriend? No. <laughs> Said no. Okay, ladies, let's make it reasonable. Let's say if I gave you, oh, I got it. If I gave you $250, would you give all your money to your boyfriend? I heard a little girl say, I'll give him a little bit. So here's my question to all my young queens in here tonight. So if you wouldn't give your boyfriend that little bit of money, then what would you think to want to give him your body so easily? So here we go. Let me just be real, real quick. Because we saw an epidemic break out in sports over the past couple of years. I don't have a whole lot of time, so. Um, but I just really feel in being led by the Spirit of God. I have to share this with you because we've seen it in football, basketball, baseball that's still going on. The reason I bring that up, 55,000, I know if I use money, it gets a lot of people attention, but it, what it really represents is something that God do everything he done, the word of God tells me it was good, right? So there's a hormone called oxytocin, and this hormone that our father designed, he designed it for marriage, but what happens is when we're young, we start doing things we have no business doing, and when you, when you abuse it, it turns to the total opposite. They've done a scientific study when people abuse it, it's worse than a person being on drugs or alcohol. So let me just give you an illustration of what this hormone is about. Because I get called in all across the world, all our kids, they shooting all these crazy things going on, but let me just give you this, because I've seen where it's destroying households with your parents, while you disrespectful to your parents, while they disrespectful for themselves. This hormone is like glue. When you glue, two pieces of paper together, and when the glue dry, and you try to separate the paper, what happens? Shh. Oh, but it's the next one. He said he loved you, or she said she loved you. Shh. And it's the next one. They said they love you. Shh. So by the time you do get a real man, or a real woman to treat you like a queen or a king, poof, all you have is confetti to offer. Because you gave your life to this one, this one, and this one. And then you wonder why they always say we can't get her to focus on her dreams, her goals, her, her relationship with Jesus or anything because she caught up with some dream breaker dude and his vice versa for a young man. This is why you can see a young lady dating a guy that's nine times out of ten, he's way over there. And she'd be like, he's dogging me. Her friend, her counselor, her friend, all right, right. they'd be like, you need to leave him, he's no good. She'd be like, I'm a And three days later, what do you see? Right back together. What am I sharing with you? Because it's destroying households. I'm not your ordinary program. I come to speak truth because the truth will set you free. Do anybody want to be free? 
Let me just confess to y'all.